Our subject today is spiritual illumination. If this morning when you awakened, you looked around to find something that God had forgotten to do so that you could do it, you would have been very disappointed because everywhere that you might go, you would have discovered that there was nothing God had forgotten. At least not in his universe. Now you might have seen many things in your universe that you felt needed repairs. And if you had stopped another moment and said, am I looking in the universe of the Father or in my universe, you would have seen that there was nothing. Nothing in the entire world of God that had been undone, incomplete, needing a human being to complete it for him. And if you had further pursued this line of thought, you might have reached the realization that all that exists is the universe of God. That all that exists is reality. And reality being God's universe, being perfect, there was nothing that had been forgotten by God and nothing that any of us could now do to improve God's real universe. If you had reached this decision within yourself, that I am now in the real universe, and there's nothing in God's real universe that needs improvement, and therefore, what are these things that I see that need improvement. What are the problems that I encounter? What are the diseased bodies that I see? What are the confusions in world affairs that stare me in the face? Where are these if all that exists is reality? And then you come to a startling realization. Joel phrased it this way, about 500 years B.C., there was a story about a man who took a bath. And in stepping out of the tub, he stepped on a rope, which to him appeared to be a saint. And he went through all kinds of agony and terror, anticipating the horrible things that would happen to him because of this snake that he had stepped upon. But when he came out of the illusion, out of the hypnosis, and realized that the rope was a rope, not a snake, once more tranquility came upon him. And this story of the ancients was meant to show us that we, as human beings, are constantly falling for the old Hindu rope trick. We see a snake where there is a rope. We see it wriggle. We see it threaten. We see it terrorize us. And, of course, the word rope means reality. And the word snake means our mortal concept of reality. When you awaken this morning, if you did not know that this is God's real universe, then you were taken in by the Hindu rope trick. It didn't have to be a rope that you stepped upon. It could be a mortal world that you looked upon. And this is as much 
the illusion of a snake where there is only a rope. In fact, that's the purpose of the story. Now let's update the old rope trick into our modern day. For example, many of you are under the opinion that you saw the astronauts go up to the moon. You looked on your television set and there they were. I'd like you to see how this hidden rope trick works in our world. Of course, the moon couldn't fit on your television screen. You realize that. So the best you could see of the moon would be a picture about it. Never the moon itself. It stayed where it was a quarter billion miles away. But you may have seen a little corner of a picture about it on your screen. You may have thrown a rock into the screen at the astronaut who stood on the moon. And you can be sure that that rock would not have hurt him one bit. You were looking at an image about an astronaut. Now, while we're busy looking at these images, our mind is not making the distinction, and we are confusing reality with appearance. We are judging. And so we see an astronaut standing on the moon. We look at the image of a man. And for the moment, the Hindu rope trick is working we are seeing in our mind a man, not an image of a man. And we see another man come along and they talk. And again, we are seeing two men in our mind, but in reality we are seeing two images. Now what can the image on your screen do of itself? Can it make a decision? Can it decide to walk off the screen? Can you converse with it? It is there. It has eyes and ears. It has legs. It walks. But does it walk? Somewhere else, a quarter billion miles away, a man is walking. And the photograph of that televised to your screen shows you a man walking on your screen. But the activity, the source of it, is one quarter billion miles away, not on your screen. That's the result of the activity, a quarter billion miles away. Now, if these two men on your screen should turn and talk to each other, you would be under the illusion that they were speaking to each other. But can images speak to each other? There's a mouth opening and closing, and you hear a voice. Are you hearing the voice of an image? And there's another ear responding to what the mouth of one is saying. That too is the illusion. The image cannot hear, but it has an ear. It has a picture called an ear. It has a picture called a mouth. Always, that which happens on the screen depends completely upon that which is happening a quarter billion miles away. And now, if by chance a third man should appear on the moon, a third man will appear on your screen. And if by chance the first man should walk away, then the first man on your screen will walk away. Always, the image cannot initiate an action. The image cannot speak. The image cannot hear. The image cannot be born and it cannot die. It can do nothing of itself. When this sinks in, that behind the image there must be another activity in order for the image to appear, then you are ready to look at the human race. 
and realize that behind that which appears there must be another activity for that which appears to be here. The human image of itself can do nothing. It has no power to initiate an action. It thinks it has. Just as you see one astronaut walk on a screen and realize that that which is walking on the screen did not initiate the action, so Jesus could look at a mortal being and see that that mortal being was an image on a screen with only the apparent power to initiate an action. You might say that he discovered cosmic television. Now the reason we're pursuing this line of discussion is to bring home with finality the illusion of mortal form because all spiritual illumination is when you get right down to what it specifically is is the realization that spirit is all there is to be spiritually illumined is to know that only spirit is and that leaves you with an entire human race of mortal dying matter and as long as you have this human race of dying matter in consciousness you are looking at the TV screen and seeing the image and confusing it with the invisible reality which makes the image possible so that if you were to stand before those who were dying and you accepted the dying form as the reality of these individuals you would not raise the dead but if you were to stand there and see the immortal selfhood which is being imitated by the mortal appearance then you would have the true picture and you could speak within yourself to your immortal self activating the invisible Christ of the so-called dead. And the response of the immortal selfhood in the so-called dead would be possible only because you had seen past the television screen, past the mortal selfhood that appears before you, to realize where it came from, how it came there, what it is, and that behind it is that which is called the living Christ, that which did not get born into a mortal body, that which cannot die when the mortal body disappears. And then you would begin applying this to yourself. I, a TV image, Yes, it will help you to realize that your mortal selfhood is a TV image. That it exists only on the screen of time and space. It is televised by a cosmic mind. And that television program, which began with time and space, is the mist which is lying about your immortal self. The immortal self that stands where the image appears to be. And if you cannot find a way to identify the image, you will not find a way to identify the reality behind the image. Now in this image comes birth. And then the image disappears into death. And if you identify with that birth, that progression of mortal growth, and that ultimate death, 
you have accepted mortal existence. And God being immortal and God being all, you have accepted existence which is not in God. You have accepted the cosmic image which appears localized as yourself. The great achievement of Jesus was to come forth from this cosmic image to see past mortality and to see that there is another channel other than the channel of cosmic television of a cosmic mind which is imitating something so the final image appearing out here which appears to be you is the imitation of something. That which your mortal existence is imitating is your true self. And that true self stands where the cosmic mind receives it, redigests it, photographs it, televises it through time and space, and out it comes as the birth of you. And up it grows in this cosmic mind. And all that remains in this cosmic mind must remain an image in the cosmic mind. An image which does not know its identity and can of its own self do nothing. Although it seems to be able to do many things. It thinks, it thinks that it can talk. It thinks that it can see and hear. It thinks that it can move. But every thing that it does is completely controlled by the cosmic mind which gave it birth. So we find many phrases directed to the mind which governs this image. Son, all that I have is thine. Thou art ever with me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Because the image, unaware it is an image, now invents a God. It invents a God and it worships the God of its own invention. not knowing that it, it is an image and that all that it thinks and does is now part of the image and is completely controlled. It lives its own individual existence in the belief that it has one. It has no awareness that the nature of God being one universal self, there is no separate individual. And the same image talks about spiritual illumination. It seeks its creature comforts. It seeks to find some form of stability in a world it doesn't comprehend. But there is an invisible teacher it says you're on the wrong channel. The channel you are on is this world. This world is not my kingdom. It is not my channel. My channel is not the world. It is the word. Just get that L out of there and you're right back where you belong. The word is the channel of the Father. From the word comes the divine image, which is not transient. And as you rest in the knowledge that the divine image is being imitated by the cosmic mind, and that imitation is coming forth as you, you have your finger on the pulse of the only problem that exists in this world. The image 
must destroy itself. The image must die. That the truth behind the image may live. The image must recognize that material selfhood is not the divine creation. It is the cosmic recreation. The image must recognize that as long as I live in the belief that I of mine own self have power, have life, have initiative, have the ability to think, I will remain in the cosmic mind and no matter how high I rise, I will never be more than an image. In my greatest success, I will be an image and someday the cosmic mind will move in a certain way and my image will disappear from time and space. That which is immortal does not create that which dies. That which is immortal does not create mortality. That which is spirit never becomes dying matter. Therefore, the reality of me, for I have all the gifts of God, the reality of me is the full spiritual creation of the Father. Now I can look at this image and recognize that it has been living on a false mind, a false life, a false personal self. And it is the personal self that must become extinct. There can be no personal self apart from divinity. You see, we're reaching now for that illumination which dispels the false sense of life, the false personal sense, and reveals the immortal reality of that which is undying, that which is without problems, that which needs no God because it is the very life of God itself. To worship God, John told us, we must worship in truth and in spirit. To worship in truth means that you must have truth in your consciousness. To worship in spirit means that you must be spirit and you must worship out of your spiritual consciousness. And that's the destroying of the material consciousness and the material selfhood and the material concept of self. Now this entire world and all that it contains is one television program which Jesus rejected. It is not my kingdom. None of it, the mortality, the mentality, the mortal experience, the progression from birth to death, the reincarnation, all of a material existence is a world image of the world consciousness from which we are told to stand ye forth and be separate. To tune into another sequence which is called the divine. The divine is issuing its program. The divine is sending forth its truth, its reality, its creation.
And as long as you remain in the human mind, you will remain a captive prisoner in the cosmic mind which functions the human mind. Even if you are a positive thinker, you are still in the human mind which is governed by the cosmic mind and the same illusion of the senses takes place. Even the positive thinker is dwelling in the five sense world of images. Now this is the totality of what confronts us as we live in the world of images, of matter, of mortality, of personal self. The extinction of that personal self was heralded by the words, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. And the I, in this case, is the personal sense. If the personal sense goes not away, the illumination, the Christ consciousness, will not come unto you. The moment you even have a human need, you are confirming the personal sense of life. As you go out to make demonstrations, you're not making divine demonstrations, you're making human demonstrations. The need and desire to make demonstrations is again the glorification of a personal self. We like to think that we're doing it to show the glory of God, but we're not. Spirit doesn't make demonstrations. It doesn't have to. Spirit doesn't demonstrate. Spirit is. And when you come above the need to demonstrate anything, especially the need to make these repeated demonstrations, then you realize you have accepted not the image self, not the personal self, but the reality, the spiritual self. I, the spirit, am the living substance of God. What shall I demonstrate? All that the Father has, I possess. The gifts of God are already mine. The need to demonstrate is a second self that has not accepted its divinity. And so we come above the need to demonstrate. But rather we come to the realization that in overcoming the world, we overcome the false image of self, we overcome the personal self that today is going out into the world. It's going to improve something. It's going to be successful. It's going to attract something good to itself. That self is the image of the cosmic mind. That self is falling for the Hindu rope trick. That self is not seeing spirit. It is seeing a material me. It is not seeing a rope, it is seeing a snake. Sometimes it sees nice things. But it still is not seeing the spiritual reality of its own being. It is always making mortality necessary. Now as you sit back behind this, in the realization that God is being God, Spirit is being Spirit, Spirit is all there is, look out at the snakes of this world and see the rope. 
pray by recognition of spirit behind flesh. Take and translate every snake into a rope. Is there evil on this earth? Then you are being taken in by the trick. You are denying the allness of God, the allness of spirit. Immediately translate every error by the recognition that I'm not stepping on a rope and calling it a snake. I'm looking at that which the world calls an error. And I am seeing that which is there. I am seeing the immortal reality that is inherent and latent in each individual that walks the earth. Where the world sees a war, it's looking at a snake. You must look not at the war, not at the images on the TV screen and see that there is no life in these images on the screen. There is no life in mortality. Mortality is lifeless. There can be no divine life in mortality. There can be no divine life in dying matter. There can be no divine life in a body of flesh. We have to face that. When you make the mistake of thinking that there is life in a body of flesh, then you have brought your concept of divinity down to a finite lie about the Father. I, said the Master, have come to bear witness to the truth. And so praying without ceasing, ye shall know the truth. And that prayer without ceasing is the constant capacity to translate the material world of images that stands before you into the spiritual reality that is under the law of God. Now where did the spiritual reality go? If you threw your TV set away, there would still be astronauts on the moon while you were looking. They didn't depend on what you saw on your TV set. If you threw away every human concept, reality would still be here. Spirit would still be here. Your immortal selfhood would still be here. Now, as you stand in your immortal selfhood, releasing your human mind, you are releasing the power of the cosmic mind to televise to your human mind its cosmic error, its cosmic imitation. You are stepping away from the cosmic TV channel of this world, taking no human thought. And now the divine mind, which is ever maintaining its perfect formation, which are the only formations that have reality, the divine mind will reveal itself unto you as your mind. It will reveal its formations unto you. The light of divinity will be born in consciousness. And the light in consciousness will do for you exactly what cosmic mind had been doing to create false images. The light in consciousness will form itself as the divine formations of your real life. 
the light in your consciousness becomes your vision. The light in your consciousness becomes your hearing. The light in your consciousness becomes not the darkness of the five senses, but the light of the infinite, revealing a perfect universe right where the human eyes had seen one with wars and diseases and disasters. The light in consciousness comes through, dissolving for you the darkness of the senses. The miracle of this is that when it happens, you are looking one moment at something which was diseased or destructive, and in just one second before your startled eyes, the very opposite is true. I have had confirmed stories and have borne witness to some. Take the case of a dog that kills kittens. Here's this dog with a dead kitten in its mouth. And yet you know that isn't so. That's a picture on a television screen. There is no destruction in divinity. There is no destruction in spirit. What are you looking with? Are you looking from the physical eyes of a mortal image? Then you will see the dog with a kitten in its mouth. And yet in spiritual consciousness you will see that dog without a kitten in its mouth and be startled by it. And yet know it is true. The change is instantaneous. One second you can see someone on a porch ranting their lungs, angry at the world, shouting at the children. And in another second, as your spiritual consciousness looks inside, something happens to that person, turns around and is perfectly happy about the whole world, has no complaint. The changes sometimes are so spontaneous that we call them instantaneous healings. But these are only little markers along the road. You have within you the power of God. And whether that power comes forth into your experience or not is going to depend completely upon whether you are the spiritual son of God or a TV image. If you're a TV image, you're not under the law of God. If you're a TV image, God isn't interested in whether you're assassinated or not. If you're a TV image, every disease on the face of the earth that is in the cosmic mind has an opportunity to find its way to your door. Because that TV mind is going to broadcast its beliefs. And everything tuned into that TV channel is going to receive its percentage and it's going to show forth on the screen of your life. To step out of mortality, to step out of mentality, to step out of humanhood, this is the way to spiritual illumination. And the more we try to cling to making a better mortal existence, the more we are taken in by the rope trick. Because that's the very decoy which compels us to live out our days in a dreary mortal existence when the full joyous abundance of spiritual life is the very reality of you which the mortal existence is imitating. You're living in an imitation of yourself. 
this has ever been the case with mortal man. Living in an imitation of himself, but knowing it not, he has ever lived with an imitation God invented by that imitation self. A God that he prayed to, who never heard him. Now the one spiritual being is God. The one spiritual substance is God. The one spiritual life is God. The one spiritual power is God. The one spiritual vision is God. The one spiritual ear is God. There is only one. And if you're not that one, you're the cosmic image. which is imitating that one. Now when I, the personal sense of self, go away, the new faculty is born within you. Christ born within you, born within your consciousness, Christ revealed, takes you in a new path, a new universe, a new life, a new experience above the five senses. This new existence is your ever-present reality. The work that you do to live in it has nothing to do with what you do outside in the world. It has to do with what you do within your own consciousness. In your consciousness, the work is done. It is there that you make the changes. It is there that you step out of the false beliefs. It is there that you release the power of the Christ. All is done within your consciousness. This is your church. And this becomes your heaven. Pray without ceasing in a meekness, a meekness which is not struggling to make a demonstration, but rather it is a denial of the personal self, the personal mind, the personal body, the personal life. Now, when you give yourself the luxury of no personal sense, you can quickly feel the infinite scope of your own being. The moment the limited self is withdrawn from consciousness, the unlimited self begins. You can hear the voice all around you. It has never stopped. You can feel that around you there are not walls of matter. If there are any walls at all, they're walls of the Word. All around you, these invisible walls of the Word are speaking. You're walking through them. They surround you. They embrace you. All around you is love. All around you is light. All around you is purity. All around you is spirit and all that it is. The image does not try to write the television program. The image merely lets the program do its own work. And we now learn to let the Spirit live us. For we are the divine image. We rest in the infinite Spirit. Our illumination must come from the resting 
of all of the concepts, of all of the densities, of all of the darknesses, of all of the five sense beliefs, we are preparing the way for a new image, a divine image, an image under grace, an image that wasn't born, an image that cannot die, we are preparing the way for a form of the soul to appear. A Christ form that lives in complete unison with the infinite spirit, knowing only the one perfect eternal life. form which is completely independent of every law of matter, completely independent of a cosmic mind, a form which knows nothing about an interrupted heartbeat, a form which knows nothing about any defect of any kind. That invisible form is your true form. It is not an image on cosmic television. It is not a snake. It is not an imitation about something else. It is the reality itself. It is the one. You must claim that one. And in the prayer without ceasing, you will look at those things which deny you to be that one and see that they are ropes pretending to be snakes. For all that exists is the purity of spirit. There is no other existence when this is your consciousness you are in your state of illumination. Then you can say, I am the light. The light is my being. And the light is not dependent upon mortal man, mortal circumstances, mortal beliefs. The light is the expression of God. God expresses as the light of my being. I am the light of the world. I cannot be a false TV image. I cannot be a mortal being. I cannot be dying matter. I cannot be defective. For the divine light is the perfect image and likeness of the Father. We are worshipping the Father in spirit and in truth. We are not in a body of flesh. We are not in a human mind. We are the divine mind being itself expressing its own ideas. We are one with each other. We are not separate lives. We are one infinite life without interruption. And we can look at the world of material things and see it as an imitation of that which we are. Then we have the secret of the illusion of this world. It is the imitation about the eye of our being. You can walk in that world when you know you're not of it, that it is only imitating you, and then that which is imitating you cannot frighten you. You won't be frightened by that which is imitating your own perfect being. 
You can look at the imitation and see the immortal selfhood behind it. So we're approaching that scope of understanding within us that enables us to live in this world but not of it. To appear as an image in it with the knowledge that we are the perfect spiritual infinite self. This is going to release the activity of the soul. Divine consciousness through the soul will function and the mind will receive its instructions from divinity. The body will follow. Even mortality appearing as you will respond to your true self so that the outer man will be working hitherto with the inner reality. Thou seest me, thou seest the Father. Not flesh that will die. We are accepting divinity, spirituality. We are not worshiping with words that which the father is the son is and I and the father are the invisible spirit the light of the world the one the eternal that which can never be defective in any way and all external defects are now seen to be images on a television screen of the mind. Not mine. They are visible imitations about what I am. Now we're not seeking to improve anything. What shall we improve? I already am the perfect spirit of God. I have sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. As I rest in this spirit, there is nothing to seek. The light within my own consciousness will now externalize. It will form itself in the divine image on earth. It will walk this earth under grace. The things that are needed will appear for the intelligence of the light becomes the law. You are living from your invisible center, your infinite selfhood. Instead of being illuminated, you are the light itself. And that light will come through the human self that appears out there to the world, showing forth the harmonies, the sequence of divine thought as it moves through you. You are a transparency for the infinite invisible. If you were to be in that state of human thought now that wants to improve yourself, that wants to take care of tomorrow, that wants to plan, that wants to be successful, you would be falling for the trick, the decoy which is ever coming through to make you believe you are a human being. If you can resist that temptation, you'll find you're never begging for bread anyway. The moment the light of you is recognized, you're in righteousness. 
And that righteous man will always have the added things. Now, we've come very quickly today to the core of this message then. You are the light, not the matter. And if you have been caught up in a personal self, the comforter cannot come unto you, the Christ cannot rise and become your living consciousness. Put that first then on your list. Personal self is the barrier to Christ consciousness. Human ego, human fear, human belief, in a physical me. And let your every concentrated activity be the realization that God is functioning now, expressing now, truth is expressing now, shining and standing right where the world sees me. Never will God stop functioning where I am standing. Never will truth stop expressing where you are. It is impossible. But your personal self removed is the stone that must be rolled away for this truth, this divinity, to shine forth for others to see it. For you to experience it. For the duality of a mortal existence in an immortal universe to be broken up so that the life of God as you becomes the only life you know. Let's be still with that before we have an intermission. second chapter of the infinite way which is so outstanding that Joel used it at the beginning of every book since 1949 illumination dissolves all material time as I recall Joel mentioned that this passage was not something that he sat down to write and to think up but rather it was given to him within. And so he merely sat down, listened, and recorded that which was given to him. He wrote it down. Illumination dissolves all material ties. Now you're going to see a great importance in this particular phrase. It is the essence of the Christ message and the infinite way. It is not a coincidence that throughout the entire New Testament, not once do you see Jesus treating a diseased body. Not once. Never would he acknowledge that such a body could exist. He was revealing that there is no mortal body to be treated, but rather that all that can exist in reality is that which is 
the activity of divine mind, maintaining its own perfect formation. So even if you tried, you would find it impossible to change your perfect self to something else. There is no power to change the perfect formations of divine mind. And so there was no need to treat diseased bodies because they cannot exist except as images on TV. You see, the TV of the cosmic mind works through the wires of your five senses. Those are the incoming wires that bring in this electrical appearance that eventually becomes the problem. Jesus wouldn't treat it Rather, he never left divine mind. He rested in the divine mind, letting it manifest its own formation. And this perhaps is the meaning of illumination dissolves all material ties. You won't find Christ in a body of flesh. And the light never becomes anything other than itself. It is always the light. It's wise to remember the purpose of the transfiguration. Perfect light becomes visible to mankind as a form called Jesus. But perfect light is what it always is. It never stops being perfect light. And so when you take that form called Jesus and try to destroy it, you're destroying the television image. You cannot destroy the light. sends forth another form in three days. Now that light revealed is the light of us. We are that light. And this awareness removes the need for us to preserve, to aggrandize the human form. You can't stop having a human form. There's nothing you could do about it. As long as you are the light, a human form will appear. Now the images on TV don't decide when to be born and when to die. They just come on and they go off. Mankind comes on and goes off, but the light always is there and always contains the fullness, the complete storehouse of divine gifts. All the qualities of God are in your light. When you accept yourself to be this light, you are dissolving material ties. These material ties are not only the form in which you walk, but also the beliefs of that form and the relationships of that form. If you look out from the eyes of that form, you will never see reality. You will only see people who someday will die. You will only see people who are well today or sick tomorrow or vice versa. As long as you're living out of the form and not out of the light, your experience 
is going to be a succession of material ties, of limitations, of lacks, of changes of matter. But when you accept yourself to be light, because something within you permits you to do that, the light isn't concerned about a form. The light isn't concerned about what mortal man can do. The light isn't concerned about tomorrow's meal or a bulging waistline or bad digestion. As long as you're concerned about these things, you're still saying, I am not the light. I am the form. And you may think, well, suppose I drop my concern about the form, who's going to be concerned about it? Who's going to take care of it? Who's going to dress it? Who's going to feed it? And the answer is I. I, which am the light, am the intelligence of the universe. I don't make mistakes. All that I do is the perfect expression of the perfect infinite mind. And this I of your being, released by your stepping out of the belief in form, takes you into grace. There will never be grace in a form. Grace can never express in a body of flesh. Illumination doesn't come to a mortal. Illumination is the result of the mortal stepping aside. You're never an illumined human being. You're illumined when you have succeeded in releasing the belief that you are the human being. Illumination dissolves all material ties. And there goes the relationships which we set up as mind concepts and which tie us into a certain pattern of activities and thoughts and beliefs and commitments. You might succeed in getting rid of the notion that you're a form, but your child is a form and you're going to worry about that form. But the light of your being and the light of your child are one and the same. Now what happens to all these forms if we live in the knowledge that I am the light? I go before you to make the crooked places straight. Do you believe that? I perform that which you are appointed to do. Do you believe that? <clears throat> Do you believe there is an I, an invisible intelligence, an invisible power, an invisible presence that actually can run its life as you better than your human sense can do? It not only can, but who's going to be running your life 50 years from now if it isn't? Who ran your life 100 years ago if it didn't? Do you see the sense of duality we are still clinging to? The personal me that is still there, afraid to let go, 
afraid to be the light for fear that something out in my daily life won't get done the way it should. Your daily life is the television image. And if it gets done the way you think it should or doesn't get done, makes no difference in your life, only in your false sense of life. There's that long expanse of spiritual water waiting for you to walk upon it. If you cannot trust the light of God to be the light of your being, to perfect all that concerns itself where you stand, then how can you worship the Father in spirit and in truth? How can Christ be born in your consciousness. Illumination is the acceptance that divine light is your being. And in the acceptance you make the extra step you cannot be that divine light and also a material being. You cannot be spirit and. For there is no God and anything. The light that you are is the light of God. And there must come a moment when the personal sense of you is absent. Totally absent. The personal sense is dead. And all that stands there is the perfect, eternal light, which is called the Son of God. Then are you reborn. then there's no concern about taking up the sword to go forth and do battle with the other mortals of this world while they are striving on television each with the other under the assumption that the other is there the divine light of love of perfection in all things is gracing and prospering all that appears in the world as you without effort the added things are there the light comes forth there are no needs unfulfilled in spirit there's no requirement that you point the way and say, Spirit, this is next on the list, or that. All moves flawlessly and smoothly in the invisible, appearing in its proper sequence in the visible as needed. And unless we're living this way, we have not caught the essence of the glory that lies ahead for each of us merely to accept. Life isn't supposed to be a constant stepping from one form of jeopardy to another. The fulfillment of the light is ever present. Is there a human mind there? Then you're not experiencing it. Is there a human body there? Then you have no light coming forth to form itself as the living grace. Are you still looking at the world with five senses and believing what you see? Then you are denying the invisible perfection which is ever present everywhere. 
You are not translating the visible imperfection into the invisible reality of God ever present. You are not praying without ceasing. You are not being meek unto the one mind. You are not trusting in your own self. But now as we know ourselves to be the light and know that only light exists, that it is never at odds with itself, it is never less here than there, its arm is never shortened, it is ever perfection everywhere, we have one infinite perfect world unseen by human eyes and yet it is the only presence here. There is no matter in it. There is no mortal in it. There is only pure life expressing pure spiritual being and that is I. Now where are the material ties that we have to consider? Isn't spirit maintaining your heartbeat at this moment? You're having nothing to do with it. Your pulse is beating. The cells of your body are performing. What had you to do with it? And that is only the imitation of the cosmic mind. Think how perfect the light body must be. If you reach this acceptance, you can cross out of your mind the belief that there is any material defect that can ever happen to you because there is no material you there which can in any way be defective. Now at this particular moment you may not particularly be able to do this but in a moment when you think not there will steal into your awareness the realization that you are the perfect love. That you have no body that can decay and that the perfect light of your being is misperceived by the world which calls it your physical form. You will know that this heaven of the Father, this perfect kingdom, this divine consciousness misperceived by human sense appears as the material forms. But the appearance is but an appearance existing only in the misperception. It isn't there in reality. All the heartbeats, all the lungs gasping for air, they're not there. We are in a spiritual universe. Heart attacks only occur in the false images. Brain tumors occur in the false images. Malignancies occur in the false images. They do not occur in the spiritual reality which is here without opposite. The disasters, the lacks, the limitations, the fears, the terrors, all of these are part of the TV image. 
When you are that light, you are dissolved from these material terrors. Time. Four simple words. Illumination. Dissolves material time. And illumination is the realization that I am the light of the Father. Now let the light shine forth as the reality of being, showing the immaterial universe, the universe of God's perfection in all things. where nothing is lacking or limited or needed that isn't there. That is the only universe there is. This illumination binds men together with the golden chains of spiritual understanding. If I do not see you as the light, I misperceive you. And I misperceive you because I misperceive me. As the light, we have between us the invisible golden chain of understanding. This is the natural state of things in spiritual living. All there is of you is pure divine light. And this before me is the television image formed about that divine light. Shall I sow to your flesh, to your image, or to your spiritual self? Shall you sow to the image of yourself or the reality of you? And you find now as you dwell more on the light of your being and less on the flesh, more on the reality instead of the imitation image of it, that you are loosing him and letting him go. The image, the mortal man, the material man. You are releasing him. You are stepping out of that image tomb. And while you're doing it, you're improving the image. because it cannot exist in fear when you know yourself to be the light. The golden chain of your understanding becomes your love for all those around you. All you can see is their light. You can see the image is in the light, but you see the image in the light. The light is what you are aware of, and you are also aware of the rope that appears to be something else. You have no sinners to reform in the light. You have no earthlings to heal. You have no diseased bodies to treat. You have no dying people. You have no poor to enrich. You are bearing witness to the truth of the invisible, ever-present, infinite light of God which bathes this heaven which men call earth. And that is why you are bound, especially to those who have the same insight as you. You find an instant rapport there It's something you don't even control. The rapport just springs right up. When two walk in the light and know it, they have this golden chain of understanding. You have probably witnessed that with those who walk in your spiritual household. There is the feeling that there's nothing between us that requires the caution of people who feel 
that we have something one another wants. We can be what we are. We can relax. We don't have to erect the false wall of protection between us. We recognize, without effort and without thought, that one life, that one light, that one perfect understanding, that all is being what it must and ever will be. Nothing can enter this consciousness to defile it. No material law, no karmic law, no human power, no physical or mental power. The light is independent of everything unlike itself. And all that is unlike itself is the imitation image, which men call this world. We are living in the kingdom of God. And when you say, I'm going to pray without ceasing, you're saying, I am living in the kingdom of God. They mean precisely the same. To live in the kingdom and to pray without ceasing are synonymous. Your expansion of consciousness, then, is the constant conscious awareness that I am living now in the kingdom of God as the light of God. And that is constant prayer. There's nothing to judge. So you're in a state of righteous judgment at all times. The golden chains of understanding are the righteousness of the light of your own being. If you find yourself condemning, fearing, planning, you have taken yourself out of the perfect grace of the divine life. You've lost your confidence in it. You've returned to the mortal consciousness that insists on perpetuating a personal me. And by finitizing, you lose the infinite. It would be marvelous for anyone on this earth to get a glimpse of that impersonal me the one who never need fear what mortal man can do to me or mortal circumstance. He who is independent of a fleshly body, once having tasted this living water, truth, we find that more and more we can look out at the mortal scene and see how obsolescent it really has become in our new consciousness. Like looking at an old magazine. And we can begin to glimpse the glory that was revealed on this earth of an invisible, infinite universe present where we stand. where there's no death on a highway, no poverty, no black and white threatening each other with death. This is the reality behind the images. Have we the right to turn away from it for a second? And so these words were given to Joel. They could become 
a miniature Bible all by themselves. The golden chains of understanding. Wouldn't it be marvelous if everyone we know had that understanding about us? It certainly would. Why then can we not give them that understanding? Whoever they are, whatever they appear to be doing, rob them of their mortality by recognizing the immortality that stands there, and you take the sting out of every so-called evil deed on this earth. How can there be evil when God is all. So we have the great revelation by Jesus, by Buddha, by Lao Tzu, that evil is unreal. Unreal. And we have mankind laboring to change that unreality and to improve it. When all the time we have the opportunity to live in the reality where there's nothing that needs changing. You cannot change the unreal and make it real. By changing the unreal, that doesn't give you reality. By improving humanhood, that doesn't bring you into spirituality. By improving mortality, that doesn't bring you into immortality. You see, it's the stepping out of what isn't, not improving it. That perpetuates false personal sense. We step out of what isn't. We step out of unreality. Have nothing to do with it. We live in reality. And then we have nothing to change, nothing to improve. And every time you are tempted to improve something, be sure of this, the only thing you can improve is unreality. You can never improve reality, it is perfect. And that is all there is. When you are in this state of the illumined self, illumination acknowledges only the leadership of the Christ. You see how the mortal mind is cast out the window? You can't be a leader, and I can't be a leader. We have no leaders. Jesus was not a leader. If I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. The comforter is the leader. Acknowledges only the leadership of the comforter within, the Christ within. And if we're not living in that leadership, we're not living as the light in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter that there's only a handful that are going to stand and try to live this way. It's our function to be among that handful. There might only be twelve in an entire generation. Let us be that twelve. The leadership of the Christ within you is the way to live in the kingdom of God on earth. There we have no ritual and no rule, only divine, impersonal, universal love. Now that impersonal love releases you from the human sense of love. But it does it in such a way that you recognize the impersonal Christ everywhere so that you're not decoyed into trying to make the universal Christ healthy and happy and not so poor. Instead of trying to improve the lie, you recognize the truth and let the truth do its own work. That's part 
of the nature of illumination. We have no other worship than the inner flame ever lit at the shrine of spirit. Your spirit, not a spirit external to you, the inner flame lit at the shrine of the spirit which you are. That's where we live. We're in a sense saying, the Father liveth my life, thou seest me, thou seest me. Him that sent me, the Father works and I work hitherto. There's no personal self there, you see. There's only God being God, and the world sees you. There's only God being God, and the world sees Jesus. There's God being God, and the world sees Joel Goldsmith. God being God, and the world sees Buddha. Always it's God being, and the form is the human concept of what God is being. Until... So pure is the form that thou seest me, thou seest the Father that sent me. So free of the beliefs that anything in this universe can exist that is unlike God. Now, these are the words of a divine consciousness speaking, but you can't take the words and go back and manufacture that consciousness. Someday they have to come out of you, and they'll be phrased differently than this. They won't say the exact same thing. But they'll speak through you as deeds, as actions, as the word made flesh. The activity of Christ in consciousness appears outwardly as these words. But that activity of Christ in your consciousness appears outwardly as your eternal life spinning out completely in a total unfoldment of divinity from within, instead of the limited five sense world. Are we still clinging to that human mind, the TV screen? Or are we willing to live on infinite TV and let the pictures that come forth be God's pictures on this earth? You can see how all the ritual and all the worship and all the creed and all the rite and all of the forms are completely ignorant of the inner light. And they are perpetuating the TV image of good and evil, of life and death, of good and bad, of bad health and good health, of youth and age, all out of the ignorance that the light of God is the substance of every form. Now this union is the free state of spiritual brotherhood. Nobody's pointing a gun at us. Our union is first a union within ourselves which recognizes no end and no beginning and brings us into a union with those of a like 
level of consciousness knowingly and with those of an unlike level of consciousness unknowingly. No one is excluded from this union. Those who are at your level knowingly are in this union, but you are one with all whether they know it or not. There is no one on this universe who is not one with you in your human consciousness. No one is excluded. They cannot be because the light of your being is infinite and embraces all within that infinity. If you find yourself excluding one person anywhere from the recognition of the perfect light of being, one animal, one vegetable, one mineral, one anything, one condition, then you have shortened the arm of the light. You see, this isn't you anymore as a personal being. This is the light living itself where you appear. This is Christ. And even though the world sees a finite physical image, which they saw of Jesus, this is Christ, living as you. This is your goal, this is the way of translation of earth to heaven, where you stand. This is the divine TV channel. More and more you say, well, what do I do? If Christ lives my life, what do I do? There is no I to do anything. There's only Christ. Let Christ do. And take your leadership from the Christ. Suppose at this minute there was no personal you where you sit, none, only pure life. This would be the truth. There would be nothing there but light. There would be no concern of the light about the next five minutes or the next hour or tonight. The light isn't hungry, the light isn't thirsty, the light isn't going anywhere, it's already there. Capture that glory of being that light which is everywhere now, fulfilled forever. And you're finding the meaning of Christ where you stand. This invisible light could project an image to the moon in five minutes if necessary. It could project a physical you into the future 5,000 years from this moment if necessary and rewrite on target. It could project you backwards into time if necessary. This Christ light of your being is in full command of the infinite. It has total dominion. If there is a single shadow of you beside this Christ light, you've lost it. The perfect diamond reflects its light from within itself. And all of that light from within comes forth and makes it what is called a perfect diamond. 
the perfect light of your being coming forth from within brings the full, infinite richness into play. And this is our dominion over the body, over the world, over the falsities, over all of the negatives. When Washington crossed the Delaware, when Lindbergh flew the ocean, when the astronauts went to the moon, this was not happening in the universe of God. This was the imitation image in men's minds about something else. That something else is where you must live. In the light behind the image. And then what happens in the image will conform to the pattern of the invisible light. And you're taking it out of the good and the evil, out of chance, out of changes in weather, out of changes in health, out of advancing old age. You're living in the pattern of the perfect light. And what comes forth from it will always bear the imprint of the sweet presence of the Father. How does Joel put it? you feel as if there's a hand in yours and a face smiling over your shoulder. You're not alone and you know it because I can never leave you and I am the light of your being. The only restraint is the discipline of the soul. A nine-year-old asked me yesterday, what is the soul in relationship to divine consciousness? You could say they're synonymous, but they're not. She had a little milk bottle in her hand. And I told her that the bottle was divine consciousness and the place where the milk came out was the soul. She got the idea that divine consciousness pours through the soul and when divine consciousness is pouring through the soul, then the pattern of divine thought is going to be manifest where you stand. We've left the realm of mind, human mind. We've left the realm of mental images. We're in the images of the soul now. And divine consciousness pouring through ever infinitely pouring its love and truth. These must now out picture as the truth the real. Here is where you find freedom, tranquility, fulfillment, as the divine images of soul pour forth as you. Yes, you're still an image, but now you're the divine image. Not the cosmic lie image called the mortal. The only restraint is the discipline of the soul. The soul is expressing perfect divinity, translating it 
into light which will move through you, out picturing itself as form. You're in an infinite computer, and it is all you. We all have this built-in grace, this one grace functions as all. Now take another look at every defect that you think is in your life and recognize that it does not exist. In divine consciousness, flowing through your soul into invisible patterns of divine idea. There is no place there where a defect exists. But if there is one out here, or two or three, something is happening in between the invisible and the visible. The reality of you is without defect. The appearance of you may be with defect. Something in between has caused that distortion. That something in between is your consciousness. Your consciousness of the divine light of your soul or your consciousness of the cosmic television of this world through your senses is determining whether or not a defect or many defects appear out here. Your consciousness is externalizing as defect or lack of it. You're either tuned to your soul or you're tuned to this world. You're either living in the one mind or you're living through the five senses. You are making the pictures that are out here. You are making the weather. You are making all that appears on this earth for you. This is your world or it is your heaven. And where your consciousness is anchored will determine whether it is your world or your heaven. In your illumination, it is your heaven. In your world consciousness, it becomes this world. All of the work is done in your very being. No one can do it out here for you. No text has ever been written that will do it for you. Not even the Bible. Your consciousness is the world or heaven. Choose you, heaven or this world, in your consciousness. No one has more opportunity than another for the reality of God to express in them. No one. If you think with a concept conceptual mind that looks out and thinks in terms of what it knows, you might say this one has more opportunities than that one. But look past the forms, look at the light and you'll see that only Christ is present. So to the Christ not to the images. And you will see that Christ will rise in your consciousness, dispelling the illusion of defects in you of any nature. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You shall know the truth. When the Christ of you is released, it knows the truth which sets you free from the defect. So I think we have this chapter pretty well in hand for the moment. 
It's only a chapter, remember. A few words given by grace to those who are open to the living word of the living Father within themselves. The rest of the message must come within you as you let the Christ write the script of your daily life. He ends this with Therefore we know liberty without license. We are a united universe without physical limits. Without physical limits. We don't even stop at the moon. There is no physical universe, you see. That's why we have no physical limits. A divine service to God without ceremonial creed. And then this great thought. The illumined walk without fear, by grace. Without fear. Of course. All you can fear is a TV image. You cannot fear reality. You can only fear that which is unreal. Remember that. You can only fear what is unreal because reality is always love and harmony. And if you fear something, you are not fearing love and harmony. You are fearing the opposite. But the opposite is unreal. Shall you fear that which is unreal? The illumined do not fear that which is unreal. They walk without fear, by grace. In the preparation for the descent of grace into consciousness, you are eliminating the possibility of a future with fear. Now these glorious words of Joel's are just the words of a messenger. In this chapter, he points out very emphatically something that will always come home to you in many ways. The world has personalized the messenger and thus has lost the Christ. The world has sought through Jesus to find God. You can't. Unless Jesus goes away the Comforter will not come unto you. You won't find God through Jesus, and Jesus was the one who told us so. Unless I go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. And carried into your living, this means, you must not personalize the messenger. The living Christ, invisible, is the real messenger. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into our channel. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that like button below. It really helps us out. And why not share this video with your friends? Spread the word and help us reach more people. Lastly, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you never miss a new video from us. Thanks for watching and see you next time.